Today we're going to look at how you can use a custom notification flow to respond to a platform event. The platform event we're going to focus on happens to be a platform event that gets fired when new, the new next best action service has an error. And this kind of error is similar to the kind of errors that can happen at runtime when a flow runs. Which in, and they're similar in the sense that the person running the flow is usually not the person who needs to get notified about the error. Uh, they're usually using the flow and it's really some administrator or IT person who, re who really wants to also find out that that error occurred. And we're going to take advantage of some new functionality where a process builder trigger can subscribe to a particular platform event and Salesforce services like Next Best Action are starting to support this by firing platform events. Another example is batch apex errors. So what we're going to do is we're going to intercept the or subscribe not really intercept we're going to su so what we're going to do is we're going to subscribe to the the alert the error uh, and when it comes in the form of the platform event our process builder process will be triggered it's then going to launch a flow and pass it to pass that flow fields of data from the events payload from the, the body of the event. And once those fields get to the flow, the flow will be able to use those fields in all of the actions that are available to it. And you can send email, you can post a chat, or you can send an SMS message, uh, and a lot of other things. So what we're doing here is we've created a way for an administrator to craft a very customized notification approach because the flow can choose to to send some kinds of errors uh, in the form of an email whereas other higher priority errors uh, might be sent an email and an SMS etc. You're not limited to a single hard-coded way of getting notified. So let's start by taking a look uh, at the particular example we're going to use, Next Best Action. We're looking at a case, and you can see the new Next Best Action component is on the right. And it's serving up a couple of Next Best Action recommendations. So everything's going well right now. Uh, and if we look at the strategy, we have a bunch of recommendations that are being loaded and we have some filters and branch selectors that help determine which recommendations actually get through. And everything's working right now. Uh, so we're gonna have to cause an error because I wanna show you what happens when you've got a custom notification flow. So we need to create an error. What's the kind of error that could happen that you wouldn't know about and you would only detect when people started having things fail? Well, suppose you can see here that we use this CSAT uh, custom field. Suppose somebody changed that and they didn't realize that this particular strategy uh, uses it. And that's the kind of thing that can happen. So let's go and change the name of that field and it's on the contact and there it is CSAT so I'm going to change it so let's change this to customer status customer SAT and that's the kind of thing someone might do and here's the message that's been coming up in Salesforce for almost 20 years this warning hey you know what other stuff may be depending on this uh, but we're going to ignore that, uh, and we're going to save this, and it's going to let us. And so now we've changed this, and nothing, everything's going along great. But little do we know when somebody goes to a case page uh, and loads it, and they get this. Something went wrong. And it's a deliberate decision that we've made uh, at Salesforce 
not to show detailed error messages to the typical users. Uh, but to make that work, we have to provide a good solution for getting this to the admins that need to know. Okay, so now let's take a look at what, because I have a custom notification flow, let's take a look at what I get. One of the impacts is that I've got right here, uh, 1025 just arrived, an error report. And if we look at this error report, you can see that I have received in email an error message with all of the stuff that I need to know. And that's, that's pretty good. Uh, but I also, as it happens, if I go over here to uh, my chatter feed, you can notice that this, it also came, it also was posted to chatter. Uh, and let's take a look at the flow that's doing this notification work. So here is the flow, and you can see that it's a pretty simple flow on the surface. It does, it sends an email, and then it posts to chatter, and you could use an SMS action. We have, there's one in the App Exchange that uses Twilio. Uh, you could post it to a variety of other places. You could log it. Uh, and more importantly, you could decide to only send emails if a certain criteria was met, etc., etc. So this is great. How did we get this to work? Well, let's go back to our design. So we just were looking at the flow. So we were looking at the end of the process, and you also saw the error. So as this shows, when that error occurred, a platform event was fired, was published. So let's take a look at the process builder trigger that has been set up to respond to that. Okay, so here I have my platform event example 2. It's not named very well. And what's going on here? It's, it's pretty simple. I start by specifying when to start. The, I start the process when one of those platform status alert events is created. And then I've set up some query information here, and we'll get back to that a little later. And then it just passes through here, and it launches the note with the notification flow. So it's calling that flow, and here you can see it's setting flow variables. And what that means is we're extracting from the payload of the platform event some of the fields that this particular platform event happens to. Uh, happens to contain and we're passing those to flow variables that we've created and so that is basically how this works when the strategy executes and an error occurs it fires a platform event that process builder that I just showed you is triggered it takes the payload information and passes it to a flow, and then the flow uses all of its powers to send the notifications to the right place. So there's a couple wrinkles here that, that uh, you need to know about if you're going to have an easy time setting this up. And let's take a look at those. This, by the way, is the the blog post that goes with the video you're watching right now. We'll provide a link to this. Uh, you can see that it's at unofficialsf, unofficialsf.com, which is a place where uh, unofficial content can be created. And so what is the first wrinkle? The first wrinkle has to do with configuring the object query. And to show you what the object query is, let's go back to Process Builder. And let's create one of these from scratch. So we're going to create this from scratch, and let's call this trigger on platform status alert events. And I'm going to select a platform event occurs right here. And now let's configure this trigger. So it's very straightforward. It shows all of the platform events 
that are defined on this org, and here's the one we care about. This just happens to be the one the next best action uses. If I wanted to, I could instead use the batch apex error platform event, uh, or one of these custom events that uh, are fired by various apps I've created. So we're going to select platform status alert event and then we get this object thing and we're asked to pick an object and this is a little confusing because the event that we care about isn't really tied to any one of these objects. Uh, so what we're, what we're running into here is that some of this user interface was designed when Process Builder only dealt with specific objects, like you would build a Process Builder trigger on account, and it would trigger only when accounts got created or changed. Uh, and so it's a little non-intuitive to have to deal with an object when you're trying to subscribe to a platform event. Uh, but what we can do is, the good news is, it doesn't really matter um, Ex that they're not that, that our object is not related to our platform status alert event. The important thing is that the matching condition has to produce one and only one result. If this matching condition produces zero results or if it produces five results, then this trigger that we're defining is going to ignore the platform status alert event. So essentially, you know, sometimes the platform event will have something in the payload that, that allows you to uniquely define uh, something. But in the case of our platform status alert event, well, we're going to dummy something up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the matching condition is that, that there is a user ID that is equal to the created by ID. So this basically is always going to be true and there's always only going to be one user that has the same user ID as the created by ID and it, it doesn't actually matter uh, which uh, user we're talking about because the user ID will change depending on who caused the error, who was running the next best action at the time. Uh, and you're only going to run into a problem here if you start deleting users. And that's not very straightforward to do, even if you want to. So we're probably going to be pretty safe here. So I'm going to click Save. And I now have my, my object query set up to return one and only one event. Okay, so here we're just going to pass through all and execute the actions. So let's talk about the second wrinkle. The second wrinkle is that the only way we can tap into that platform event payload, if we want to use it for things like sending email, and posting chatter messages is if we launch a flow. And that can be something somewhat non-intuitive because there's other stuff here that you would think we could use the payload for. For example, we want to send an email. There's something here called an email alert. So in theory, we would expect that we would be able to use the payload from the platform event. Well, it turns out that we can't. Uh, if we, what about this post to chatter? I've been talking about posting to chatter. Uh, so I could go in here, I could select uh, Eric Ware. And, you know, I've got merge field right here. So presumably here I can merge in uh, my platform event. But it turns out I can't. Uh, the only stuff I can merge in is from the object that I selected. Process Builder does not currently let me get at the fields on this platform event. So that's kind of disappointing. So it turns out that the only thing uh, that we uh, really want to do here 
is we want to launch a flow because if we launch a flow and that flow is properly configured then we get the ability to select it here and we can start to map variables so let's take a look at this list there are six useful things here that the flow can accept and we can map payload events into from the platform event into these flow inputs so for example I can pass to the flows subject variable the subject field from the platform event this is all the stuff from the platform event here is the one place where we can really grab this and use it and I can go on here and I can basically match up the, uh, the different fields that I care about the component name with corresponding flow variables all right so and let's see let's call this uh, launch flow so this brings us to the third wrinkle the third wrinkle is something that will be familiar to flow uh, some of the flow users uh, and admins and builders that are watching this and that is that flow doesn't automatically know that these are the things we want so going back here again how does process builder know to provide these six items these are pretty specialized these are pretty specific how does it know that the custom notification flow can accept these six objects it doesn't know automatically it knows because in the flow we have defined flow variables and set them to be available for input so you can see that here in the flow if we go to the manager and you can see here are the corresponding six variables now they there's no way the flow knew that these were the six that we cared about we had to define them ourselves we had to go to new resource and say I want to create a variable I want this variable to be a text variable and I want this variable to be my variable name and then very importantly available for input have to check this this is the this is this makes it available inside of process builder it's a security feature basically you don't necessarily want your variables inside your flow to be accessible inside a process builder so only the ones that you specify are going to be done and so you can see my variable name shows up here so that's the third wrinkle if you're in process builder and you're going why don't I see anything when I when I pop this open I don't see anything here it's probably because it's probably because you don't have input variables in your target flow uh, that are available other things that have to be in place the flow has to be active and it has to be an auto launched flow and you could see that I don't know if you remember but if, if you go back in this video you'll see that when we selected this flow we can't change it anymore at this point but when we selected this flow it said hey it's got to be an auto launched flow and the only flows you're going to be able to choose from are active flows. So those are the things to keep in mind. For more information, there's this big uh, help guide uh, that's available uh, in the flow and next best action sections of unofficialsf.com. Uh, so basically, you can just go there and look for the information on creating a custom notification flow uh, and hope this was useful to you.